For generations, Disney was the company of magic and wonder. Brought together by Walt and Roy Disney in 1923, this company was focused on quality animation, which at the time was a burgeoning industry the Disney brothers would take the reins of and create something truly special. No one can deny the legion of classics this one company has produced and the countless smiles put upon the faces of people of all ages for the last 100 years. And for good reason, the focus on family and values combined with whimsical music and top-notch artistry was a winning combination I don't believe either brother could have dreamed of. To top it all off, Walt was vehemently anti-communist, aka based, making him a target for those he openly disliked, who would slowly infect Hollywood and lead to the company's slow decline. Case in point, the false accusations of anti-Semitism that still persist to this day. Come back, Mr. Disney. Are the Jews gone yet? Uh, no. Put me back in. <laughs> Constantly fighting to keep the company afloat over the years, the noticeable decline in quality was apparent until the Renaissance and post-Renaissance eras. But the practices of Bob Iger, once he became CEO in 2005, has led to more losses than people who invested in FTX. Collectively, Disney has lost hundreds of billions in the last few years. So how is this possible? For starters, I think it is clear there isn't real effort or passion behind their recent projects. Disney has turned into the Krusty Krab after being sold to Howard Blandy and churns out literal garbage painted in familiar ways after someone in the boardroom came up with the idea to resurrect the beloved classics. Some movies are certainly successful, but those same box office juggernauts hold up about as well as an all-you-can-eat buffet until Melissa McCarthy walks in. Films like The Lion King are technically amazing, with CG occasionally resembling stock footage from National Geographic, but the half-hearted music, bland color palette, and lack of facial expressions alone turned most people off to this almost shot-for-shot -shot remake. This same lethargy has been applied to almost all their revived classics, ultimately making them worthless in the long run. This includes remakes prioritizing female characters. Not an inherently bad idea if handled with a modicum of respect, like Elsa or Rapunzel, at least as far as I can remember. But raising some at the expense of others is not at all fair and has proven to be yet another grave miscalculation. Cruella comes to mind, a bloated, self-important rewrite of one of Disney's most despicable villains into a likable girl boss. That's a paradox in itself, but even children could see through the nonsense, and like so many in the same vein, it has lost money. This is partially why Disney purchased some of the biggest companies out there to acquire their tentpole franchises to bolster their own numbers. Lucasfilm, Marvel, Fox, Pixar, and more have all been bought and put to work in the nostalgia fields to keep the movies coming. The problem with this part of their world domination plan is the repeating of their current mistakes. Pixar used to be the Goku of entertainment, accepting challenges head-on and pushing technology to its limits, while Disney had already devolved into Vegeta, believing itself unstoppable. For a time, Pixar showed them up at the box office with good stories and innovative technology. But after the merger, you'd be lucky to find a Pixar movie with more effort behind it than me waking up in the morning. Lucasfilm hadn't put out a new Star Wars since the seppuku that was the prequel trilogy until Disney came along and said, we don't need a warm body. Star Wars has been an abysmal failure up to this point, and now the Galaxy's Edge theme park is set to close three years after its three-year construction period. Then there's Marvel, which was the event of the summer until they were bought out and pimped out to put out multiple times a year, until it too became just another hallway to throw your wallet at. Is it any wonder Disney is looking to sell ESPN, ABC, and their own Disney Plus to recoup their losses? If the destruction of these franchises weren't enough, Disney really stepped in it for attacking people who point out the flaws of their business practices or those within their products. If you disagree with the politics, dislike the characters, or otherwise detract from their movies, now you, the audience, are the problem. Do you dislike Rey's spontaneous manipulation of the force she learned exists only a few hours ago? Well, now you're a misogynist, and the reason women get paid 75 cents for every dollar a man makes. Do you think it's unbelievable that Inquisitor Reva survived the same stab that killed Qui-Gon Jinn? Well, time for a train ticket to Charlottesville, because now you're an honorary member of the KKK. This hatred of their consumers has also spread to parents who disagree with their children shown 
subject matter they either disapprove of, or at the very least, believe it is too early for introduction. This is partially why Lightyear tanked. I'm a big boy, I can go potty by myself, so when Disney slanders fans and non-fans alike, I can take the hits. But for the most renowned family-focused entertainment company to turn its back on the very thing the company was founded on should tell you all you need to know about Disney's downfall. And for this, Disney believes themselves safe from the culture war, which makes me laugh considering Bob Iger has repeatedly lost to Ron DeSantis at every turn. They don't make good movies anymore, and use the products of others to compensate for their losses without reflecting on their own mistakes. When the newer acquisitions fail, Disney blames us. When blaming us doesn't work, they step into the political ring thinking they can throw their weight around. And yet again, they fail. Despite all of this, though, there are still blind cultists defending Disney. Are we kidding? Disney lost over a hundred and twenty billion dollars in the last year alone. They've fired 7,000 employees and is putting their streaming services up for sale. This ignorance shows how economically illiterate these cultists are. Disney is a business, and in order for the profits to continue, a company will do what is necessary to stay afloat, like firing worthless DEI staff or shit writers like Justin Simeon. Disney sold its soul for profit and sacrificed the morals and values of those who built it. Disney is a hollow shell, ever hungry for money, with no care of who supports it, just so long as the money keeps coming in. Which is ironic, considering these wackos who genuflect at the altar of Disney also hate big business, but apparently they're too blind to see because of my representation. And if you really believe your ideology is unstoppable and Disney won't yield, just remember Twitter, Bud Light, and Target. Now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.